Hey folks, Adrian Dater here, Dater on Hockey with the great Brennan Bo. We're going to start our first of, we'll see how many post-game shows on uh, on our YouTube channel. It's called Dater on Hockey. Brennan and I are basically running that YouTube channel though, so anytime you subscribe, help us get to over 1,000 subscribers, we can actually start making money on this thing. But that's not why we do it, right, Brennan? We're actually here to just give from our hearts and talk after... Another tough avalanche loss tonight. Uh, let's start off by just saying welcome, Brennan. Tell us where you're working these days, and uh, I'll tell you a little bit about where I'm working again these days, and we'll move from there. Uh, so after the debacle, I guess you could say. <laughs> yeah. Um, I went over to, to Full Press Hockey. That's where I was interning during the summer, and uh, my editor – during the internship was gracious enough to offer me the, uh, the abs beat and Eagles beat over there. So I'll be, uh, writing for both, both beats on, uh, full press hockey.com. Yep. That's great. And, uh, you know, we're going to be doing this here, but, uh, so, but we're sort of a joint venture on this YouTube channel thing. And, uh, uh, I moved on from the site, Colorado Hockey Now. I've written about it, but uh, just for everybody out there, I uh, just uh, there were just certain things that I couldn't deal with anymore as part of it, and uh, I just I decided to leave and uh, have started a brand new site. Everything's going good on it. Data on hockey on Substack, which I guess you know is just sort of a you know very singular sites where you know writers just write to their audiences and that's it. There's no more stupid. You know, 400 pop-up ad video, you know, ads on on every story you click on now. It's not as much of a clickbait site as, as they wanted it to be over there. So, so here we go. Um, enough about us, though, Brennan. People want to know what's going on with the Avalanche right now. Why have they lost five in a row? They lose uh, and four to two tonight. The Vancouver Canucks had a two nothing lead second period. Everything's going great. And for me tonight, everything started with the, I mean, I don't think it was, you can call him loafing, but Devontae's clearly thought there was going to be an icing on a puck and he stopped basically skating on it. And by the time the ref, he turned his over his shoulder and looked like the ref said no icing. That led to a penalty that he took and a little bit of frustration. Canucks, get on the board after that. Then they get two quick goals. I think they scored three goals in like 236 tonight. Mm -hmm. George have slammed his stick on the crossbar. And that's kind of how it went the rest of the way tonight. I do see things tonight. I mean, this is, this, you know, it's getting a little mildly serious here. Five losses in a row, 19, 15 and two record. They've been stuck at 41 points for over, you know, 10 days now. Um, they're 12, they're 11 points behind Dallas. In the division, they do have three games at hand on them, but it's getting kind of serious right now, isn't it, Brennan? Uh, yeah, I, I mean, it, it wasn't all tase, though. That that's the no. thing. No, <laughs> I mean one of those goals was uh, I and and I know that like the 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 general scapegoat is always Sam Gerrard, but I mean that one of those was just Sam Gerrard's fault when he pinched up too high and. Yeah. And uh, was a little aggressive on that, but um, yeah, that was the second goal that tied it. Yeah, um, yeah, it was the one right after his. And then, uh, you know, another turning point in the game, though, too, was Cogliano is going to clear a puck on the PK. It hits the referee, stays in the zone, and Canucks end up tying it right after that. Cogliano has some words with the ref and gets a 10 minute misconduct. Very rare for him. Um, yeah, you know, I know the refs are supposed to sort of get away from the glass when there's a rep hard around and they're trained to do that, but you know, you can't rely on that every single time the guy had it, you know, he was, he, the puck hit him. You got to play on, you got to fight through it. It seemed like the yeah, that, yeah, I was just let that, you know, totally affect their whole game or not. And that was one of the two major turning points of the game. It did swing the momentum a little bit, and I Cogliano, honestly, I, you've you've talked to him, I've talked to him, and he he's he chooses his words carefully, mm -hmm. and and when he was yelling at that ref, he meant what he meant. <laughs> yeah, but I don't see why he would get so upset over something that's going to happen at times. The puck's going to hit the ref. 
You know, he, he can't always get out of the way for every little thing, right? Yeah, true. I mean, it, it, the ref is going to get in the way sometimes, but when it led directly to a goal. Yeah, case, well, true. I mean, you're going to be, yeah, it's, it sucks. You're going to be frustrated, but you can't you can't go then putting yourself, your team down by 10 minutes, but mouthing off to the refs. And, you know, frankly, it was a bad night for Cogliano because he took another penalty in the third period that helped stall the momentum. Yeah, he's for him to take two penalties, let alone a 10 minute misconduct, like you said, is yeah. just that's unusual for him. He he yeah. stays out of the box quite a bit. And in fact, I don't think he has uh, many penalties at all. Yeah, well, I know. I mean, you know, he's plus he's like they're one of their best PK guys. So, you know, when he goes out himself, it just hurts everybody. Uh, by the way, folks, I am laying down on this uh, podcast or uh, video because uh, my back is killing me. That's a big reason. I, I like to lay down at times when that happens. So, uh, you know, I don't think anybody's offended by that, hopefully. But, uh, <laughs> that's just the way it is here. I, the, I, my uh, my back is um, very, very bad all the time. So, uh, yeah, sitting up for a while, leaning forward. Doing videos, I noticed it really hurts. It anyway. Enough about me. Um, uh, Cogliano, thirty-four games, eight penalty minutes before tonight. Wow. So he, yeah, he had more penalty minutes all season mm -hmm. than he had all season tonight. Um, yeah, so he doubled them. I'm sure he's pretty embarrassed. I mean, we're not there in Vancouver to ask him, but uh, I don't think any Denver media was there tonight, actually. Um, uh, yeah, I don't think so. So. I'm sure he's pretty uh, upset, embarrassed, and knowing him, he'll probably say something like, you know, geez, he'll probably get up and stand in the room and say, gee, you know, I'm sorry, guys, I, that's on me tonight. Yeah, that's probably the kind of guy he is. Um, I don't know. What else do you think? I mean, we, we can't score right now, you know? Yeah, see, they, they were throwing pucks on the, on the, uh, the, the net. My God. At the beginning of the game, it seems like that's all they were doing was just shooting the puck, shooting the puck, shooting the puck. But I nothing was going in, and it, and it's not like Dilly wow. is the greatest goalie in the world either. Oh. So McKinnon hitting the post that, that I think that could have made it three nothing. Yeah, game over there, you know, the puck goes in one minute, inch to the left, and it's game over probably. That's hockey. I and uh, the Miko had nine shots on goal. Um, yeah, he was great tonight. Yeah, and he, was, and he seemed like he was just everywhere. He and was, then, he was everywhere. And then I noticed, uh, I mean, one thing that jumped out to me was Lekanen. He seems like yeah. he was always in the right position tonight, and he was getting yeah. a lot of shots off, even though, uh, yeah. my gosh, he only had four shots on goal, but halfway through the game, he already had three shots on goal. So, yeah, I show five, I show five shots for him, but yeah, same. He, he, he had a good game. Exactly. He had an assist. Um, the, you know, the other petition, the the big issue right now is yeah. fatigue. Yeah, what? I needed to refresh. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> but yeah, five shots. Are we still recording? Yeah. Oh, okay. Sorry, I thought we were refreshing the whole video. Anyway, that's how homemade work video work, right? Hi, folks. <laughs> Fatigue right now. Uh, Kale McCarr, 30-17. Taze, 26 -45. McKinnon, 25-55. Um, top guys are tired. I mean, I know McKinnon's probably shouldn't be tired. Just had not sit out a month, but, you know, do you think it's, it is fatigue with Taze and McCarr and this is what's going on, too? I mean, I thought. Absolutely. I. Uh, you can't have these guys playing this many minutes in the, the beginning uh, of the season. Not, oh, I hate that excuse. I will agree to this, though. If they're playing 30 minutes, that means they're having to cover up for some other people that aren't as good or whatever or making mistakes. And I'll tell you, right now, the guys are really missing that second pairing of Manson and Byram. Well, I mean, uh, yeah, Manson's on his way back. He did skate today. I, I did see that. Uh, One to two weeks, I bet. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he was he was doing a lot of puck handling today, and then. Um, yeah. uh, but anyway, they're missing those guys big time right now. Yeah, 
Um, I don't know. Why do you think, I mean, do you think Bednar changed philosophy a little bit tonight too when they were up to nothing, made him sit back too much? I don't know. It's hard to say because it seems like he's not changing anything when they're down. Yeah, I mean, or when the when the other team starts to to come back a little bit, he just he gets back on his heels and is caught off guard. I I, I mean, it, it's it's tough to say, but I mean, it seems like he'd give you a stereotypical answer, anyways. Well, Georgiev, um, he looked good at the beginning. Yeah, he did. I think he stopped his first first fifteen shots, maybe sixteen. Uh, um, at least, uh, then, yeah, 13 in the first period, at least. I thought it was good to see some anger out of him, at least, slamming the stick over the crossbar. Um, I mean, at least somebody showed they cared tonight. Otherwise, I thought a lot of guys just sort of were going through the motions a little too much tonight. Um, not the top guys. I thought they played hard. But, uh, gosh, those – Lines two through four, I mean, they just didn't get enough done at all. Mm-hmm. It didn't seem like they they were ever into the game offensively. Helm almost tied it in the third with that nice rush, but I can't remember any other really good scoring chances on forwards, you know, seven through 12, really. Not too many. Um, um, O'Connor, Couts, you know. I mean, Cal didn't even have a shot on goal. Nalgan gets hurt earlier in the game. He's out. I mean, it just – nobody had anything going beyond like, ranting in tonight, lecking in a little bit of McKinnon at times. But not enough. Not enough in the end. I mean. And one thing that kind of jumped out on the page to me was that uh, Comfort only was 25% from – the face-off dot tonight too, which that for him is complete flip-flop from where he's normally been. Yep, yep. Uh, the Avs won a grand total of forty-two percent of their face-offs tonight. Um, let's see. Yeah, uh, Copper was six out of eighteen, twenty-five percent. Uh, I'm sorry, six out of twenty-four, twenty-five percent. Yeah, that's not very good. Alex Newhook, another, you know, 30-plus night face-off performance. He had that early assist, which I thought was going to propel him more to a better game, and then it just sort of seemed like he disappeared too. Well, and you would have thought that, like they were saying on the broadcast, it's like, oh, you know, he does better on the road, and then all of a sudden he just kind of went into nowhere. Yeah, and how but, about, what about Curtis McDermott playing a grand total of 247 tonight? I mean, just – I don't know. Do you, why dress the guy if he's only going to play two minutes? Um, I, I I know they're playing him on wing, but I I guess to have that presence on the bench, I I don't know. I uh, I guess I um I just feel like he should play more. I mean, I don't think he's that bad a player to only play two forty seven. Yeah, he. But, you know, Bednar was trying to get that tying goal the whole way after it was three to two. So I guess yeah, you got to shorten your bench. But I don't know. It just looks stupid. I mean, yeah the the only other player that like didn't skate that much was obviously Malgin, forty seven seconds, uh-huh. and then um the other players beyond that was eight minutes at England, and that's it. Yep. Yep. Um, looking over the sheet, I mean, bad night for Connor, Logan O'Connor again, minus two, one shot on that. I don't know what's going on with him, but it seems like forever since he scored a goal. Um, Lucaro was Ma- minus two. Ben Myers, nothing. Ten minutes, no shots, no points. Two face-off wins, four face-off losses. Um, yeah, this is just your problem right now. There's just not enough secondary scoring. There's not enough guys taking the pressure off of Miko and Nate and Kale and, you know, Lekin in. Uh, just seems like it's drying up again. All the, all that secondary scoring. And while they were winning two to one, three to two games before, now they're finding ways to lose those games. 
So and and you get definitely can't blame it on Georgia because he's a at a nine two nine save percentage. So he's yeah, he's stopping no, the goals. Wasn't his fault tonight. No, um, that was all people in front of him. That was that was people in front of him. It was you know, just getting out work there for a couple of minutes. You know, the. Uh, the, the goal that he got all upset about and slammed the stick on, he did let out a rebound. I think it was a backhander in front. He gets the he makes a save, but then the Bozier came in on the uh, cleaning up the loose change, and boom. There should have been more help, though, on de-muscling people out of the way and getting to that puck. I just didn't do it. I, that, it, I think too many, just too much time on penalty kill is what, did it tonight that's it well and also not taking advantage of the worst pk in the league and uh, and one of the worst in the last like 30 years in the league and percentage wise i think the connects were 66 point something percent tonight coming in and what the abs went like what one for five which is still 20 percent but you know, you got to score more against that team especially when you really needed it in the third period and they really didn't they never really got a great, great look on that final power play. I thought they were going to find a way to score on that, but I think Nico had the best chance, but he shot it right in the guy's crest. So uh, Colin Delia was good tonight too. I didn't know he handled the puck so much, but he was good. Oh, uh, he, let's see. He had a 938 save percentage. Yeah. But I, and he, you could just tell he was on, he was on cue tonight. He was, moving well he had the confidence and he would there was nothing getting by him well i don't think the odds put enough pressure on him though really i mean i think there was two shots on goal in the first nine minutes of the period for the abs and third yeah they didn't test him enough that was part of the problem like they did early on i thought and then they just stopped um I don't know. Hey, that's the way it goes. Uh, we're sort of that's how we're going to keep these chats sort of tight and bright. I mean, any other things stick out to you? Not really. I mean, they looked a little sluggish, but uh, I mean, they have for the last couple games, and they need to pick up their feet and a little bit and keep them moving. But uh, the the pace of practices have been pretty fast and. They've been working on the power play, and I don't know why they can't score on it. So let's, let's hit briefly on some of the injuries and take a take, take a uh, you know call on a quick night. Um, it's the Landis Gog thing, another setback. Can people not diagnose this guy? What's going on? I don't, uh, I don't think even Landy knows, to be honest. <laughs> Maybe not. So, I know uh, when you and I were, were working together that, I mean, I got a couple videos of him and he was definitely taking it easy on that mm -hmm. knee, yeah. but um, you could definitely tell that those were just to test it. And that was about it. Um, Byram. See, no, I, I do think it's a lower body. I think, I think I know what the injury is, but I'm not going to speculate because I'm, not doing that anymore on injury. <laughs> um, but I do think he'll be back. The question is, what's their record going to be like at the time? Can they nail this out some more and get back to at least in the top eight? Because right now they're like 10th or 11th in the conference. So um, my question is, what's he going to look like when he comes back? How much time is going to be left? And is it, you know. I still think this team going to make the playoffs, of course, but maybe it's going to get too too late at some point if these guys well, are coming back with you know twenty games to go, fifteen games to go, and they're you know any, any, who knows what what's going on there with the record. Is 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 it going to get to a point where Landy's even just going to say screw it? Al, you know, I might as well just stay out the whole year. Give I, that knee a rest. Knowing him, I would think not. Um, you know, I'm sure he wants to get back desperately. Um, but, you know, if he doesn't think it's going to be good enough, he may say, yeah, I'm not good enough. And then the abs can, 
can put him on LTIR and go way over the cap and get this new player that they own. Well, he is with. already on LTIR. I don't think I didn't think they put him on there just yet. Um, I can double check. I uh, thought he was we... just on regular IR, not LTIR. But if I'm wrong, then I'll hop to it here. Uh, give me a second, and I can pull up cap friendly and double check. But um, because I'm pretty sure they they made that move earlier than they wanted to because they were keeping them just on uh on the yeah, just the regular cap now. i'm looking this up now too um i don't remember seeing it long-term injured reserve gabriel landeskog he's the only one right now and then ir is uh bowen byram francis and manson Yes, it does say that. Okay, nobody said this. Not to me. Uh, I mean, it was announced a couple mo- like a month ago or so. A month? What? A month and a half ago. It was kind of something that was put what? right under the radar. All right, I missed it. I guess stays on LTIR. It says, especially on Puckpedia too. Boy, nobody said that to publicly <laughs> to me. That's so okay. Now we're talking about yeah, the ads are way over the cap and uh, or. You know, they can get a guy, $7 million. Problem is if, if Landy comes back before the end of the regular season, they have to shed that that whatever the money they may go over. Yeah, know? so the projected LTIR wow. used is going to be 1.7 and change. Wow. Okay. Well, wow, Dater learns something new every day, right? He learned it. <laughs> On no, I swear to God, I thought he was on IR only. No. Um, I mean, Val's yeah. not even on IR, but uh, I, I expect him to probably be back um, uh, when they get back in town. Well, maybe, yeah. Well, how effective is he going to be? He keeps hurting his foot. So yeah. It I, fits this time. And and I think uh, you and I were talking about it before the game, but uh, like I was, I was saying he's doing some really good hockey stops. He's putting a lot of weight on that uh, that um, that ankle, and and it's. But you even said he's like game situations are different. So yeah. Um. um wow. Well, okay. So uh, so they they can get. Anybody they want over $7 million, the question is. So maybe Landy will do that with his team, saying, hey, guys, I'm going to do – if I can't come back. And, you know, he has to prove it. You have to have an independent doctor check him out if he's really going to go on LTIR. Did you freeze again, Brennan? Okay. (laughs) Brennan is – there he is. Yeah. Okay. And freeze sometimes. Um, yeah, I guess Landy could do that, but it doesn't it doesn't help the Avs really when Gabe Landeskog isn't playing for your team. That's not helping anybody. So yeah. will he be back for the playoffs or not is my my question. And will they make the playoffs? Uh, at this point it's um it's, it's not a very good team right now. No. And they can't score. Nobody steps up behind the first line anymore. And, uh, you know, the times they do get an occasional goal, it's like, um, yeah, they're not, they're not scoring in real big moments either, you know? Um, so it's, you know, I hate to say Debbie Downer tonight, but <laughs> teams lost five in a row. What do you want me to say? Well, it, it's, it's nothing compared to, uh, 16, 17. That's all I have to say. Oh, oh. <laughs> so bad. Oh, so bad wasn't that team. It was just brutal. No, it's not going to get that bad. But right now it feels like just like can't score. No, I know Rodriguez, Dow, you know, Landy. Rodriguez wow. is with There's the team. So much they could. Come back and be good, Val. I mean, it's just – it's all there to come back still, but it's not – it's not happening. And the season goes by pretty quick sometimes. You know, you're almost yeah. at 41 game mark. I mean, Rodriguez is – he he's he'll be back soon, if not next game. But uh, yeah. 
I'm think pretty sure I know what's wrong with him based on what I saw the yeah. yesterday. So, yeah, it's a crazy game. We all counted out the Blues when they lose O'Reilly and Tarasenko, and now they're two and zero on their Eastern road trip without him. So, just try to predict a lot in hockey, and you're going to look foolish, right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I think that'll do it for this this uh, pot. I tell it a podcast again. What will we call this show? YouTube video show? I guess. <laughs> <laughs> um. Anyway, we hope people enjoy this. If not, just let us know. I know I I look a little weird laying down, but that's you know I feel much more comfortable. So what, what do you want? Right? It's just my head talking. Who cares? I uh, I do have some good background stuff though, and I switched to my office for these next one. I'll have a good background just like you do um full of books and stuff and a lot of good have memorabilia in the in the background as you've seen so so i'll do that next time folks <laughs> sounds good to me all right well brennan thanks for doing this thanks for watching folks youtube data on hockey get us to a thousand subscribers and brennan and i are then going to split all the little google revenue that comes in it'll sound like a plan sounds like brennan. a plan <laughs> okay thanks guys i guess we'll turn it off now thank you